my liege, I did deny no prisoners. But I remember when the fight was done, when I was dry with rage and extreme toil, breathless and faint leaning upon my sword, came there a certain lord, neat and trimly dressed, fresh as a bridegroom, and his chin, new reaped, showed like a stubble land at harvest home. He was perfumed like a milliner. And twixt his finger and his thumb, he held a pounce at the box, which ever and anon he gave his nose and took it away again. Who there was angry when it next came there, took it in snuff, and still he smiled and talked. And as the soldiers bore dead bodies by, he called them untaught knaves, unmannerly, to bring a slovenly and handsome course betwixt the wind and his nobility. With many holiday and lady terms, he questioned me amongst the rest, demanded my prisoners in your majesty's behalf. I then, all smarting with my wounds being cold, to be so pestered with a popping jay, out of my grief and my impatience, answered neglectingly. I know not what. He should, or he should not, for he made me mad to see him shine so brisk, and smell so sweet and talk so like a waiting gentlewoman of guns and drums and wounds, God save the mark, and telling me that the sovereignest thing on earth was parmaceti for an inward bruise, and that it was great pity so it was, this, this villainous salt Peter should be digged out of the bowels of the harmless earth which many a good tall fellow had destroyed so cowardly, and but for these vile guns he himself would have been a soldier. But this bald, unjointed chat of his, my lord, I answered indirectly as I said, and I beseech you, let not this report come current for an accusation betwixt my love and your high majesty. 